Hi, I'm Mark Bayshore, Executive Editor for Fire Rescue One and FireChief.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about command post management, especially for the new officer or the new fire chief out there. It's important to note that no matter how many bugles you have on your collar, whether you wear a uniform or not, whether you're using a command chart, and how calm you are, none of those things in and of themselves make you a good incident commander. Your challenge is to take all of that training and experience and all of those things and bring them together in an effort to bring calm to chaos. We've all likely seen those incident commanders who couldn't command their way out of a brown paper sack. So bringing all of that training and all those things together, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today, and hopefully those will be the incident commanders that you'll emulate. Training and repetition will build the experience you need to feel better, calmer in the incident commander role. Does your department provide guidance, training, and opportunities for you to practice? This particular simulator takes people and time to put together, but the investments will prove worth it in the end. With or without a robust training program, I encourage you to drill and practice on your own. Observe those who have mastered it and find your niche. Part of bringing that calm to the chaos is understanding that you can't be all things to all people. That's really the beauty of the incident command system, is the ability of the system to bring uh, geographic labor task management to the game so that you can take smaller bites of an incident and spread that division of labor around. The command post, whether it's at the back of a buggy, inside a buggy, or at a fence post out front, really is the heartbeat of the incident. So I encourage incident commanders uh, to use, especially new folks, to use this acronym I'm going to give you uh, to help understand the important parts of running that effective command post. And that acronym is probably a new one for you, but that's LABOR, L-A-B-O-R, LABOR. The L stands for location. You want to locate the command post in a uh, place that is visible and that you have visibility at. Not only do you want to be able to see the incident and see where it's going and be able to adjust one way or the other as you need to, but you also need incoming people to be able to see you and to understand where that command post is so that they can report there to get their assignment. A. A is for announce. Probably part of your SOGs in this announcement, we're talking about announcing the location of your command post, the name of the command post if that's part of your SOGs, giving a brief CAN report, conditions, actions, needs, so that everybody that's coming and the dispatch center understand what's going on. So L for location, a for announce, B for box. Find yourself that 10 by 10 box and don't leave there. The 10 by 10 box might be this imaginary space behind uh, a, a vehicle that's set up for command. It might be the vehicle itself. You roll the windows up and, and you're in that secluded area, that's your 10 by 10 box. That's okay if that's what your department says. The back of the vehicle, this is my preference, is the back of the vehicle and being able to hear everything going on around you. That's, it's a critical task, and it's important to be able to manage that task amongst everything else. And that's where that 10 by 10 box comes in. Being able to have a command support team, it might only be one other person, but have a command support team, and those are the only people you allow in that box. Everybody else needs to deal with somebody else that's outside of that to get whatever information they need or they deal with the radio. O is for observe. Part of being an effective incident commander is not just watching the fire, but it's observing everything going on. Whether it's listening for those telltale signs, it could be that mayday that you hear on the radio, it could be somebody screaming, it could be the sounds of a structural collapse, an imminent structural collapse, it could be a pass device, it could be screeching brakes coming at you from a different direction if you're out on the highway. There's any number of things that that incident commander needs to be observing. And finally, R is relax. Remember, this isn't your emergency. You will not bring calm to the chaos by bringing chaos to the chaos. Chaos should never mean chief has arrived on scene. So there you have it, labor. That's location, announce, box, observe, and relax. If you can master those things, you'll begin to be able to have effective command post management. This is just the first of videos that we'll talk about uh, command post management. In the second video that we'll do, we'll go a little deeper into some specifics of what to be looking for on the scene of command post. So remember, doesn't matter what kind of uniform you wear, how many bugles you have on, 
paid volunteer, that doesn't make you an incident commander. Running an effective incident scene, whether it's a fire or a medical call, a mass casualty incident, a hazardous materials incident, running that effectively and everybody going home safe, uh, the situation being mitigated the way it needs to be mitigated in a time that's reasonable, uh, that's what will make you an effective incident commander. So I offer you the suggestions we've talked about today, just for that, especially for that new person. If you practice labor, location, announce, box, observe, and relax. You practice those things and you will begin to practice the art of bringing calm to chaos. Thanks for joining us here today on FireRescue1.com. We've got lots of great articles on the .com on command post management, command and control. Uh, also a lot of good information at FireRescue1 Academy. Join us there and let us know what you think. Keep safe, stay smart, and take care.